mouse cursors. It's probably the thing that you most often see when you look at your screen, and it's not the only one. There are many. Exhibit A, the default macOS cursor. Exhibit B, a different cursor with a different hand. Exhibit C, a white version with a different hand. Exhibit D, a totally different cursor, different hand, different resize, different everything else. But this is macOS. So how do you customize your mouse cursor within macOS? It's super easy to do on Windows. You get a cursor pack, there are thousands available, go into settings and then just apply the cursor one by one. Or there's even an install file that you double click and your cursor is set. But on macOS, it's not so simple. If I go into access accessibility settings, which is where you can change your mouse cursor, and then display, you can see that there's no option here to change how the cursor looks like, except its size and the color. So if I get back to my default cursor, I can only change the size of it and the color of it. There's no way to change how the cursor looks, the shape of it, only the color and the size. And also this option, which lets you shake it and it gets bigger. Beautiful option. I made a video in the past about mouse cursors, this one, and although I went into detail on how to change the cursor on macOS, I didn't go into the nitty gritty specifics. So that's what this video is. I'm going to show you how to create, well, great is a strong word here, how to yoink cursors from other operating systems like Linux and apply them for your MacBook. There's going to be a little bit of Photoshop involved, so if you don't have Photoshop, I'll leave a link in the description where you can get it or there are also other places where you can get it. First, Mousecape. Mousecape is a free app for Mac that lets you create and set custom cursors. Without this app, this wouldn't be possible. For example, I couldn't possibly apply a cursor like this without Mousecape. So the first thing you need is to go into this link, I'll probably leave it in the description, and download Mousecape over here. It's going to download a zip file on your desktop, which you can then double click. Let's quickly unhide all of my icons on the desktop, which you can then double Double click and it will extract the app Mousecape. Then come into your finder, click Go and Applications, and then simply drag Mousecape into your Applications folder. I already have it installed, so I'm not going to do that. Once it's here, you're going to be able to open Mousecape from your Spotlight search. That's the installation part done. But what if you don't like a bunch of cursors that come with Mousecape and want to create your own? Well, creating your own is very hard. So a thing that I opted for is good old crime, stealing, or for legal reasons, borrowing. Before we start borrowing, a few things first. You can go into File and choose New Cape to create a new cursor cape which means a new cursor, and it's going to be created somewhere. And here at the bottom, it's empty. If I click Command E, this is going to open the edit menu where I can customize the cursor pack. I can click the plus icon to add a new cursor, then select the type of cursor from here, for example, arrow, which is the default cursor. If you're wondering why this looks garbage, let me explain. Hello there, this is future me. And unfortunately, I bring bad news. The bad news are that you're probably going to have to enjoy the crappy resolution cursor for the rest of this video. Because this screen recording software doesn't care that I have a 2x beautiful looking version. For the first 10 minutes of this video, I had to go in and manually add the cursor file that I actually used in the video. But the recording is very long and it's going to be a massive pain in the ass to switch out the cursor to the actual one that I was seeing on the screen. For example, here I switched it to the hand that I was seeing with my eyes and not the 1x version. Or over here, manually switch it to this resize cursor. Because for some reason, this software just uses the 1x version instead of the nice and beautiful 2x version that should look like this and not like this. So whenever you see a cursor like this on the screen in the video, know that I'm actually seeing the 2x version, the smooth version, the nice version. So I'm sorry for your eyes that will have to endure the horrible pixelated cursor throughout the rest of this video. And then there are four squares where I can drag the cursor file. Now this is important. On macOS you have four versions of the same cursor with different sizes. This is because of how macOS scales its screen resolution. On Windows you just have 1x cursor and that's it. But let's take this cursor for example. I'm going to apply it by double clicking then command E to edit and inside of the arrow I'm going to remove the double arrow. And once I save it look at what happens to my cursor. I'll save this then close it out and then double 
quick to apply. As you can see, it became this very crappy low resolution version. So by default, macOS uses the 2x version. I'm going to click Command Z to undo, Command S to save, and apply once again. And now look at how beautiful and smooth it is. So what this means is that for each cursor, you not only need to have the 1x version, but also the 2x, and 5x and 10x is optional. These are useful if inside of your accessibility settings and display, you have this option checked. Shake mouse cursor to locate. When you shake your mouse cursor, it's going to become bigger, and that's what the 10x version is used for. Or at least I didn't find another place where the cursor gets 10 times bigger. So now if I shake it, it becomes the crappy version. If I had a 10x version, it wouldn't become a crappy version. But instead of doing all this work, you can just uncheck shake mouse cursor to locate, and you don't have to worry about that. So now we know that for each cursor, we need at least two versions of it. The default size, and then the bigger size. But where do you even find mouse cursors? Well, there are a couple good websites. First one is gnomelook.org. This is where I found the Captain cursor pack and then obtained it for myself. You can go into cursors and then browse most recently added ones or go into most popular ones and browse most popular ones. Now with this Captain cursor pack, I got really lucky, downloaded one of these files, which I don't remember which one it was, probably this one or this one. Let's try the white variant now. And inside of its folder, I found PNG versions of the cursors. Not this file. I'll try a few more. There we go. It was this file here. And as you can see, there are 1x and 2x versions of this cursor, and they're all PNG files, which meant that I can come into mouse cape, create a new cape, then right click, edit, add a new cursor, let's say arrow, and simply find the arrow here, which is default, and then just drag it onto here. Then the exact same for the 2x cursor, which is double the size, and there I had the cursor. Now, one more important aspect is this hotspot here. It says 0, 0, and this dot is at the top left. This dot is essentially the pixel that clicks on your mouse, and right now it's not really aligned with the mouse. And if you increase this number, the dot moves horizontally, and this number, it moves vertically. So you have to kind of guess where the hotspot spot will be. So I'll say 2 and 4, and it's 4 and 4. Right now the red dot is exactly on the tip of the mouse cursor, which means that when I click with my mouse, that's the pixel that will register the click. You're going to have to do this with every cursor and set up the hotspot manually, because obviously PNG files don't have a hotspot embedded in them. So that's this cursor. It's very easy. You just go through every single cursor and apply the 2x and 1x version, and you have yourself a beautiful cursor. But with other ones, it's not so easy, and you don't get served PNG files on a silver platter like this. For example, this cursor right here, simple cursors. I like them, but no matter which file in the file section I download, there are no PNG files. But luckily what we have is this image here, and it seems pretty high resolution. So what I'm going to do is right click and save this image, then I'm going to open Adobe Photoshop. Photoshop is probably one of the best apps that I know how to use, and until you learn how to use it, you don't see how many possibilities it opens up, like creating YouTube thumbnails or mouse cursors. Anyway, I'm going to drag this image into Photoshop, then select my rectangle tool, zoom in, and I want to crop out just this one cursor. Also, I'm going to hold shift so that it's a perfect rectangle. Now you can see that the width and the height are 59 pixels. That's definitely not the same size as we had with the Captain cursor pack, the one where we had PNG files. So if I click on one of them and go command I for info, it says here that the dimensions are 64 by 64. So ideally, we want to recreate the same thing. I'm going to click on the crop tool and click enter two times to crop out only this cursor. Then I want to make this 64 by 64 pixels. If I go into image and image size, right now it's 59. So 64 minus 59, I need to increase by five pixels. Now you don't want to do this inside of the image size panel because it's going to resize the cursor with it as well. You want to go into image and canvas size, which will only increase the canvas on which the cursor sits without resizing the cursor. So I'm going to increase the width by 5 and the height by 5. And now it's perfect. However, each PNG file
file has a transparent background. And right now the background is white, which means that if I apply this as my cursor, I will have a white rectangle with a mouse cursor drawing inside of it. So I need to first get rid of the background and probably this shadow as well. But the easiest way to do this that I found is to recreate the cursor entirely. So how can we do that? I'm going to click P to get the pen tool and then I'll go in the middle of this line here and I'm going to recreate the arrow with the pen tool. If you've never used the pen tool, this might be a little tricky, but it's not impossible. I'm trying to go in the center of everything. So not the outline, but the center of the stroke. Here there is a turn, which means that we're going to have to create a turn with the pen tool as well. You can do that like this. Boop. Perfect, we have the outline. Now I can essentially turn this into a custom shape in Photoshop. So I can right click and choose something and click define custom shape. Mouse cursor for video. And now this has been created as a separate shape. I can come here and select the custom shape tool. If you don't see this, right click and select the custom shape tool. It will most likely be the rectangle. And now from the shape panel, I can scroll down and select the newest shape. This is the shape. And now I can draw this shape wherever I want. If I don't hold shift, I can even stretch it out like this. Obviously, I'm going to hold shift. Now I started it here and I'm going to hold space so that I can move it around and I want to make it exactly the same as the cursor I see here. Boom. Perfect. Well, doesn't look so perfect, but that's because it has a custom stroke and fill. Right now, the stroke is 15 pixels, which is a lot. So I'm going to decrease it to something like two pixels. And as you can see, if I disable and enable it, the mouse cursor is basically the same. I'm going to disable the background and voila. Now the one before had this top here cut off, so I'm going to do the same with my cursor by just adding a layer mask, selecting the rectangle tool and selecting these three pixels here. Now I want to color this with color black, so I'm picking black and just coloring it out. Now the top is cut off just like with this cursor. Now it has a shadow which we can easily add ourselves by double clicking on the right side of the layer and then going into drop shadow. I'm going to make it completely black and increase the opacity so so I can see it and then decrease the size so I can also see it. Now you can play with the size distance to find the shadow that you like, but I don't want the shadow. One more other thing that I will do is import this one to see exactly where it's located. This is only because I memorized the hotspot location of this cursor, which is 44. So I want to move this one in the exact same spot so I don't have to memorize any other hotspots. But obviously you don't need to move this around. And command option shift W to export this, choose PNG to have a transparent background and export. Beautiful. Now we have the 2x cursor, which means that we also need a 1x cursor. This time I'm going to go into image, image size, and instead of 64, I'm going to divide this by 2, which will give me 32 pixels. Another important setting here is this resample nearest neighbor. Make sure it's set to nearest neighbor and not by cubic or preserve details. Make sure it's nearest neighbor. This is important. And okay. Now it resized the cursor to 1x its size, but it looks like crap. So what we can do is pick the rectangle tool and select the pixels that we for sure want to be black. So all of these I want to be pure black. Then I'm going to add a new layer, pick my brush tool, set its color to black and just paint it black. Never mind, that looks horrible. I'm going to delete this line and see how it looks like now. Still completely horrible pretty legit. And then I'm going to invert the selection with command shift I and delete everything else from the screen, which basically means color everything black inside of this mask. Beautiful. For some reason, it didn't catch this one. Beautiful. We have the outline. I probably want to delete this one as well. And now I can select the rectangle tool, fill everything back in that I want to color white, and I will have the 1x version of the cursor. Boink. Beautiful. Something is wrong with the tail here. So I'm going to try adding more pixels or removing some pixels and see what looks better. Let's go with it for now. So I'm going to click Command Option Shift W once again to export this. And now the size is twice as small. It's also PNG and export. Beautiful. So now we can go into Mousecape, click Command E to edit this, add a new cursor, say that it's an arrow, and then drag the 1x version here and then the 2x version here. Then configure the hotspot to be 44 or whatever hotspot you want and Command S to save. And we have ourselves a new beautiful 
mouse cursor that's very similar to this one. I will have to interrupt once again because of the stupid screen recording software this doesn't look at all similar to you. This is the cursor I saw on the screen during the video. It's not the crappy 1x resolution one. Once again I'm very sorry that this happened. I want to also yoink the hand from this cursor pack so I'll quickly do that. Image image size 56 we need 64 that's 8 pixels that we need to increase. Canvas size and 8. Okay again I'm just going to use the pen tool to draw around the fingers. Here I need to come back up through the same path, so I'm going to hold shift and add a point here, which will start from that point, which is a thing I didn't know before making this video. Also, I'm holding option to rotate this handle here. Just like so, ladies and mental gen. Define custom shape, and then from custom shapes, choose the hand and draw the same exact hand. Beautiful as always. Two pixels as the outline. Now we have some unexpected issues here, which I'm going to cover up with a layer mask down here because I can't be bothered finding out why this is. And then here I'm just going to draw with color white to hide them. Also, it's probably a good idea to save this before we resize everything so that we can go back. So I'm going to convert this to a smart object Object, which will basically save the hand inside of it. And then image, image size, and divide this by two to get a 1x version. This doesn't look like we're going to need much fixing, but I'm still going to color everything pure black instead of this gray color. And now if I go to Mousecape and add another cursor, which is going to be pointing, I can put my 2x hand here and 1x hand here. The hotspot will be 13 and 4 maybe? 13 and 5. I must have screwed up the size of the 1x cursor because the hotspots don't match, but let's ignore that for this video, I'll fix it later. And now I have a new hand cursor. I also made a black version of this by inverting everything and also made the beam cursor, the text select, a little larger. So now it looks like this. Now all we need to do is the exact same process with all of these other ones, which of course is a shit ton of work, and to avoid this you can simply get PNG versions like I did here. Now Mousecape also works with .cur files, which are cursor files for Windows, so you can go into websites like DeviantArt, which have a bunch of cool cursors for Windows, and then download these from here and apply them to your Mac without any Photoshop shenanigans. Also you can find a bunch of Linux cursors on GitHub, if you google for something like Linux cursor cursors github and go into linux cursor themes you can see there are a bunch of themes three but let's see how this one looks like i'll browse some of these folders and let's see the dark version and it has svgs which is one of the file types that we need so either png svg or dot cur file and so i can download this folder somehow i don't know how to use github and so i can just download these files so what you can do with this one is also drag it into photoshop and you can immediately set the size for your cursor so 64 pixels for this one and there you go that's the png drag it in one more time and you can set 32 for the 1x and there you go that's 1x that's 2x so if you get svg files it's even easier you also might be asking why do you need these 1x cursors so for example when you take a screenshot command shift 3 the 1x cursor will always be shown in screenshots you can see that it looks horrible if it didn't exist and i took a screenshot the cursor would actually be twice the size that's why you need the 1x size now i realize that this is a very niche video and most of you probably will not go through the hurdle of even even installing Mousecape, let alone downloading custom cursors and resizing them in Photoshop or remaking them in Photoshop. But if there's one person as obsessed with mouse cursors as I am, there you go. By the way, if you like this wallpaper, it's from my wallpaper pack. I'll leave a link to it in the description. So that's how you borrow and customize mouse cursors on macOS.